Alrighty, well, it has been a while since I actually filmed one of my two mile walks. So I thought today uh, I would try to film one. So off we go. And we're going to start off with saying I got a lot to talk about, really. We'll start with my uh, oldest daughter. We'll, we'll start with her. So, a ah, bunch of cars, hold on. There we go. I walk down partly down a road. So, uh, sometimes the cars go by and interfere with uh, the sound. So, I just wait until they're done. But anyway, my oldest uh, just had a birthday. But uh, prior to that, <clears throat> she, uh, she calls me up and uh, she has had a, a pet goat for, for a few years now. And uh, apparently a couple uh, really nasty mean dogs from the neighborhood got loose and uh, uh, attacked her goat and uh and killed it so she's very distraught about that but uh there's nothing you can do about it it's dead right so she asked me if because they were gonna use it they started to use it as a butchering goat is what originally it was going to be and then it became a pet but uh, when it passed away she asked if i could come over and uh show them how to butcher it and I said, well, I'll come over. And I went over, checked it out. And I told her, I said, don't eat this thing. <laughs> no. Um, well, it had been attacked by dogs and got pretty ripped up. And it had apparently laid out overnight before they got, before they found it. And uh, ice put it on ice. And it just was not... Uh, it was not at a con consumptible for humans. It just wasn't good enough to be eaten by humans. So I told her no. I said, don't do that. And uh, I asked her what she was going to do with it. And she said she was going to bury it. So because she wanted it butchered, I had already, uh, I'd already skinned it. And I had it tied. And uh, so I said, well, I said, would you have any problems with me keeping the hide? She said, no, you can have the hide. And we had discussed that before I butchered it. So I have a, a goat hide. Now, uh, her husband, Billy, wanted one of the horns to make a knife out of. And uh, uh, while, I was, while I was skinning it, uh, I went ahead and left the horns on the hide and uh, I told him I said now I'd really like to keep this intact like this uh, if you can let go of not having one of the horns because he was wanting to cut off one of the horns and use it as a handle for a knife but they were nice enough to decide not to do that so now I have the full hide with both horns still attached. Now the goat hide was damaged in several spots because of the dogs. Uh, they ripped its hind legs and its, its rear really bad. And one of them uh, clearly got a hold of the goat's throat. So there are some, uh, some tears in it. And when I was uh, skinning it, uh, there were several spots that were difficult because it was really torn up and bad. So there's still, uh, there was still some meat and other stuff still attached to the hide when I got it completely off. So, uh, I was going to stretch it just out there at my, my daughter's house, but she was concerned about uh, 
a stray animal coming by and getting a hold of it or the kids getting out there and seeing it so what I did was because I'd already tacked it up to a fence back there in their backyard and had poured uh, three containers of salt on it already but uh, her concerns were legitimate so I untacked it rolled it up brought it home and put it in the freezer so the next few days sometime within the next few days hopefully I can pull it out I put my stretcher together a couple nights ago and it's sitting on the patio waiting for me to pull the uh, the goat hide out and put it on my stretcher so that I can uh, I can properly clean it and then I'm just gonna let it uh, gonna let it dry up and and become rawhide with with the fur on and uh, I don't know I might leave it that away for a while and just use it as a wall hanging but eventually at some point I'm gonna want to uh, work that hide and make it supple so I can uh, I have it as like a cloak of some sort so I think that would be kind of cool but right now it's sitting in the freezer so so that's happened now I did not video I did not video uh, the uh, uh, removing of the of the goats hide so there's gonna be no video of that uh, but other than that I hopefully will bring you through the process of uh, tacking it up on the stretcher going through the process of cleaning it and uh, letting it dry out and eventually down the road if I decide to actually work the hide and make it soft I'll probably run through a video of that as well another thing that has recently occurred so uh, my dojo Zinshin uh, Self Defense Academy is at a, uh, a gym called Workhorse Gym uh, no, I'd say two, two or three blocks. Man, two or three blocks away. There used to be a boxing gym called Iron Fist, and uh, uh, I've got a little bit of discussion about that place on my YouTube channel somewhere. And uh, I actually did a boxing match at that gym. Uh, whenever it was, it, it hasn't been too long ago, but. Uh, that's on my YouTube channel as well. So uh, they moved and went to another location, still in town, but uh, a kickboxing organization has uh, gotten that uh, building now. So there's kickboxing in there. And of course, being close to the dojo and being a martial art, um, I had to uh, go check it out and I've talked with them several times and uh, so recently uh, the gym owner of where I'm at workhorse gym the owner of that got a phone call from a kickboxing uh, promotion and uh, see what was it called Buck Wild Productions I think it is anyway uh, they got a, a call the dojo well the gym got a call from uh, this production company wanting to know if he knew of any fighters that was 135 pounds that wanted a kickboxing match well the the boxing match was or the kickboxing match was going to be like I don't know a couple days in a couple days from that note and uh, Ron, the owner, didn't know anybody that was 135 pounds that would be interested in not only taking a fight, but not only taking a fight that, uh, that quickly. So I told him, I said, well, I said, you can tell him you don't know anybody that's 135 that's looking to possibly kickbox, but you do know somebody that's 235 that would be interested. And, uh, well... Uh, we got in contact 
and uh, I asked a few questions of them. They gave me a few answers. They didn't answer all of my questions, but they answered enough to make me uh, interested. <laughs> I mean, uh, I, I've done I've done MMA. Uh, I, I did that one boxing match and I haven't done a kickboxing match yet so you know why not right so I was asking a bunch of questions one of the questions was when was the, when it was it gonna be well uh, November 4th and yeah a little over a month from when I was talking to them and I thought well you know I don't know um, honestly uh, I'm really not in any uh, serious condition for a complete stand-up fight. Uh, that that definitely is true. Not that it would stop me from doing it, but that's also my birthday. And I thought, well, do I really want to go in there and get my ass beat on my birthday? I mean, I don't know. You know. Plus, you know, even though I don't mind losing, it would be nice if I actually won my first kickboxing match. Um, so, you know, I talked it over with uh, my wife, and she was all ready for me to do it. Uh, I talked it over with uh, one of the gym uh, guys up there at the Workhorse Gym, and he agreed with me that condition-wise, endurance, endurance-wise, I probably wasn't really in the best position to take the fight and uh, then I went down today and talked with the kickboxing guy and uh, explained everything to him and uh, he he agreed with me you know if I felt I wasn't in a good condition uh, conditioning position that I probably shouldn't do it at least not he told me basically take your time there's no reason to rush especially at my age I mean hell um, you know uh, technically I won't be 57 until November which is two months less than two months away but realistically I'm 57 uh, I'm not in the greatest shape for 57 but I'm definitely not in the worst shape as for 57 and I don't know too many 57 year olds that would even consider getting in a ring or a cage you know uh, I'm considering it uh, not only considering I really want to do it I just want to get into a better I just want to get into better shape maybe not physically I'm still gonna be round I'm still gonna be fat I'm still gonna be lazy I'm still gonna be bald I'm still gonna be old right but uh, you know even if it's three two-minute rounds you know that's, that's still a lot for stand-up when I'm used to being on the ground if it was a you know if it was a MMA type fight I'd be more likely to take it because I would have the opportunity to take him to the ground and rest a while uh, with this kickboxing thing you can't take him down so there's no resting so uh, I, I'm not gonna take the November fight but the guy at uh, the kickboxing gym uh, offered to let me come up there and train and get into condition and then I can fight later so uh, I've been wanting to do it uh, I just haven't well one is financial you know um, I need to discuss with him what the uh, financial arrangement is really going to be whether I can just come up there and train or whether it's going to cost me X amount of money you know that area uh, now if I can do it without paying it, it'll it'll make me feel a lot better but you know I can do it and promote his gym uh, when I fight you know that sort of thing so I don't know but that's going on I should uh, uh, maybe not this year but next year do a little kickboxing something I haven't done yet might as well try it right all right so I'm walking through the park and let's see if can you see that from here so get a little closer there's a rainbow look at that at least what's left of one pretty cool
So I don't know. I just think that, uh, I don't know, to pad my, uh, my ego a little bit maybe. You know, I'm a, I'm a national uh, point karate champion. Uh, I'm a, I've boxed. I've had a boxing match. So, one, but it's one. I was one and oh, you know, so winning record. Uh, uh, I've been in the cage many times. So, why not add kickboxing, you know, to that list? It's something that uh, I, haven't, I haven't done yet. And why not? I mean, I'm only 57. I still got plenty of time to get in there so uh, get myself in a little bit of a condition and uh, keep in contact with uh, that organization and uh, uh, jump in jump in the uh, jump in the uh, the ring do a little bit of kickboxing at least once I mean once I you know if I win I win if I lose I lose it's not really a big deal to me but and I said that to the to the kickboxing guy and uh, <laughs> He doesn't follow my uh, my lackadaisical attitude about that sort of stuff, you know. He uh, he wasn't really enthused that I didn't care whether I won or lost, you know. He's like, but you gotta want to win. Well, you know, I want to win, but I don't care if I do. You know, to me, it's got nothing to do with winning or losing. It's got nothing to do with the guy that I'm fighting, and you know, it's it's just. The fact that I did it, you know, that's all that interests me. Just the, the, the mindset, especially of a 57-year-old guy that says, you know, eh, let's jump in the kickboxing ring at least once, right? Why not? So there's also something else I really want to talk about. Um, and while I'm filming this, at this present time... I can't talk about it, um, but by the time this video is out, um, that information will be out. It's got nothing to do with my martial arts or my fights or anything like that. It's a purely uh, family-oriented uh, information that I'm not allowed to share yet, but I will say this. Seven. <laughs> now, um, some of you who watch not only my videos but Michelle's videos as well probably knows, kind of figure out what I'm talking about. Now, uh, by the time this video gets released, I probably will be able to uh, openly talk about it. Uh, but just on that rare occasion that somehow this video goes up before I can officially make a statement uh, there you go oh by the way if you think you know what it is um, you can put it down in the comments but I'll be honest I can't say anything at least now but if uh, by the time this video goes up and this video, let's see, it's September, I don't know what it is. It's September something. Uh, yeah, I, I couldn't tell you. But this video won't go up until about a month, about a month from now. So, uh, October 20th or 22nd, 24th, somewhere around there is when this video should be going up. And uh, I'm pretty sure by then the news will be out there for all to hear and I'm pretty sure that Michelle uh, will have something on her channel about it uh, before this but like I said I'm not a hundred percent sure that uh, uh, I, I will be able to officially announce anything uh, at the at the time of this release but I know I can't say anything right now so that's all I got to say. Number seven! <laughs> Woo! So classes are doing 
okay. I mean, doing normal. Uh, I have my regular classes where I teach Aikido. Uh, I do have uh, a private student now that is uh, working on my grappling, uh, my grappling aspects. So that's really nice. Uh, I have uh, one of my Aikido students just get his brown belt and uh, he should have his black belt sometime next year. So that's doing really well. Uh, I've also started working, uh, uh, really working on my book, my martial art book. Um, that's, I'm actively, I'm actively writing it now. So, uh, uh, I'm in the process of uh, doing that, and that's uh, taking up a lot of my time and effort, to be totally honest. It's, uh, it sounds pretty simple, but it's really not. Uh, but I am actively working on that book, and uh, it's basically going to be... Uh, uh, the information necessary to go from a starting out white belt uh, up to I don't know at least first degree black belt uh, I'd like to I would like to do a book that uh, incorporates first through fifth degree because uh, fifth degree is basically when you start putting everything from first, second, third, and fourth degrees together. And then sixth degree on in the Zenshin Aikijitsu system is not so much uh, the information and skills you gain for yourself, but from sixth degree on is the ability to share that information with others and promote the style and get it uh, get it out there so uh, that's that's real important especially to me it's real important that the system uh, survives me so uh, I hope that happens so I would like to discuss more about the book but uh, I'm not gonna do that right now uh, it's I mean, I think, personally, that I came up with an interesting and unique uh, difference that my book is going to have that I have not seen. Now, I will say this for sure. I have not seen a martial art instructional book uh, done the way I'm going to do it. All right? Whether it, it actually occurs out there or not, I don't know. I'm just saying... I've never seen it. Uh, I was looking for an interesting and unique way of doing it. I always thought, because I've always wanted to do this, but I always thought I would do it just like any other martial art book. You know, you'd have your little square pictures, and right next to them, there'd be a small description of what's going on, and you'd put those in a series that would show the technique. Now, I'm going to say that uh, I'm, not, I'm not straying too far from that format, but it is different. And I've run it uh, by a couple people, uh, my wife um, and the owner of Workhorse Gym, which is basically my benefactor for keeping Zenshin Academy running and uh, I ran across both of them and uh, they really like the idea they find it unique and different and they think it'll really work out now uh, there's one other person that knows about it which happens to be my mother and uh, uh, basically well she really doesn't know what's going on. I mean, she's not a martial art type person. Um, but she did help. Uh, she did help me 
uh, in the development part of this. Uh, not that she came up with the idea or, or anything like that, but she assisted in me obtaining something very important that I needed to pull this off. So, uh, I appreciate that. Now, uh, as I recall, it was like 10, I think it was like 10 bucks, uh, but it was there. Uh, I didn't have the 10 bucks and uh, she asked me what I wanted it for. I told her and she said, get it. So, uh, not that I couldn't have eventually gotten it, uh, but uh, she, she knows, even though it's really not important to her, she knows how important it is to me. And so uh, she, she did do that for me. Now, those of you who know uh, my mother and I's background may be a little shocked at that. Uh, I will say this, uh, I grew up very, 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 very poor um, uh, in a not really good neighborhood to a single, single parent basically. Uh, my parents got divorced when I was three and uh, you know, uh, all of the, the three of us uh, myself my sister and my brother were all uh, raised with uh, with her in the house so uh, uh, it wasn't a great childhood and I'll be honest I don't remember a lot of it because I've I, I psychologically blocked it out of my head that's the truth um, but when I graduated high school I left the next day and uh, her and I probably hadn't spoken uh, unless there was an argument or something mean to be said. We probably hadn't spoken in 20, 25 years. Um, again, every once in a while maybe we spoke, but it was, it was out of meanness and anger on both sides. So, you know, we didn't have a good relationship. Uh, I don't, I don't really know what happened, but... Uh, a few months, maybe maybe more, several months ago, uh, all of that changed. I just decided I was getting too old for that shit. And I retched out, you know, a little olive branch and retched out. Didn't work out too well the first couple encounters we had. A lot of, a lot of arguments, a lot of bickering, a lot of meanness. But eventually, eventually that went away. And... Uh, yeah, we're doing pretty good. I mean, you know, con considering. Now, my dad, on the other hand, uh, I've I've stayed close to him uh, since the uh, the leaving after high school. Uh, so he was living in Florida, and uh, the day after I graduated high school, I was in Florida, and. Uh, was around him for a few years so and then I moved back here to Kokomo he eventually moved back and we got a pretty decent relationship so uh, at this point I actually kind of have a decent relationship with both my parents